most annoying sound ever, right? Anyone riding disc brakes will be familiar when the brakes rub and it's the most annoying thing ever and you just want to get rid of it. So today I'm going to show you a few steps that you need to take in order to get rid of the rubbing disc brakes. It's not always that straightforward. So the people that just get their 5mm Allen key and loosen their caliper bolts, pull the brakes and redo the bolts. Most of the time that doesn't do the job really that well. Of course, one in 10 times it can work perfectly fine, but the, the tips I'm giving today are really the ones that are going to set up your brakes really perfect and they will run well in the long run. So you don't have to do it again after like 10 kilometers. So like I said, there are a few steps to mastering your disc brakes. And the first of them is make sure that your wheel is actually in the frame, is actually well placed in the frame. Especially, this is especially true with quick releases where you can undo it, yet the wheel can just fall out. And also it can be fitted into the frame wrongly so that it will be actually not nicely centered. Let me demonstrate this. So you're gonna push down onto your handlebars so that the forks really push down nicely on the wheel and open your quick release and close it again with the pressure still on. So now the wheel is placed nicely in the frame and we took that fold out of the equation. So what we now want to do is check if our rotors are actually running uh, true and don't uh, warp uh, or are like deformed. And the easiest way to do this is to actually remove your brake pads from the caliper because then you're able to see it better. You can take the caliper as a still uh, reference that doesn't move and then just spin your wheel and check if the rotor is actually uh, moving around. In this case, it's really nice and still. So also this problem is taken care of. This brings us to our next component and this is the caliper that needs to be perfectly centered around the disc rotor. We have this uh, like little nose that comes out on the right and on the left and we want it perfectly placed in the middle of those. You just want even distances between those little noses from the disc rotor so that this is placed in the middle. I'm gonna take a quick photo here for you guys so you can make yourselves a better picture of it. What we then need is uh, the pistons to move evenly out of the caliper. To achieve this you want to have perfectly clean pistons. We use a tool like this to push them back, to push the pistons back once we replace the brake pads. What you never want to do is to push dirty old pistons back into the caliper because then it is just basically like sand or grip paste and they will have a hard time coming out and maybe the left or the right one will move uh, will move first and then the other and this will be the cause for one brake pad like being glued to the disc rotors as I call it and the other one is just uh, freeing up space, so uh, one will rub. So what you can do to clean the pistons is get yourself a small brush, like a toothbrush, or a brush that is even smaller, any kind of small brush then that, can, that you can fit into tight spaces. And also you want to have the pistons out, so you want to push them out, but be sure not to push them out too much so they fall out. Be sure to have something at hand that is uh, quite large, actually like a one centimeter surely, in order to keep the brake pistons from uh, falling out. That would be really bad. And then once you have them out, you see the surface around the pistons that normally is invisible when they are in the caliper. And this is the surface you want to have really clean. And for that matter, get yourselves any kind of degreaser, like a brake cleaner like this from Motorex. I'm sure you can pick this up in any do-it-yourself shop. And if you have some compressed air, like this one, this is really great. So you can dry them and then before pushing them back, what's really a nice trick is to actually use a Q-tip and dip it in some mineral oil or any oil that uh, those brakes that you have use. For SRAM that can be DOT or DOT, for Campagnola and Magura this will also be uh, mineral oil and for Shimano of course mineral oil. Then dip this into the oil and just like loop the surface from your, um, from your pistons before pushing them back. This will give some addition, additional lubing and they will run even better and especially they will run evenly. So we have brake pads and we're gonna just go ahead and put them in. Of course we can put them in from above. That is not true with all the calipers. Sometimes you have to put them in from, from beneath. This is especially true for uh, lower end models and you will have to remove either your wheel or your caliper. But once you have perfectly centered your caliper, you maybe are a bit reluctant to again 
remove it and then recenter it. So trust me, it is worth the effort to uh, just remove the wheel, put in your brake pad, uh, then place it in again. Be sure to again place it on the floor and push fir down firmly onto the handlebars so the wheel is really nicely placed. Also, don't forget your pin or your screw that secures the brake pad. If you have so many steps to follow, uh, you don't want to miss that. And then we're just going to go ahead and pull the brake lever. And we see that the brakes are moving quite evenly. Could be better, but you see both pistons moving out, which is basically already a good sign. What you then want to do is just like hold back the piston that moves more. In this case, it's the right piston. And you can hear we have no rubbing already, which is great. What can be true is that one brake pad pushes the rotor to the other side, which is also bad and it was something we don't want. What you can do is uh, grab some pliers and hold them back carefully, but you risk to scratch your caliper. You also risk to damage your brake pads or even pistons. So what I like to do is like get myself um, this feeler gorge with 0.1 millimeters up to one millimeters. And you wanna grab a middle one and place this tool between the disc rotor and the pad. Place it so it is uh, nicely centered uh, in the piston and then just pull your brake lever. This way we have more material to the right. So the piston is forced back into the caliper and the left one is encouraged to come out. And once you can make out a gap between the disc rotor and the brake pads, which is true now, you can see the light from both sides coming out. So this is really a good sign. And you see the rotor is not pushed in either side. So we have a nice working uh, brake system. Of course, this was an XT brake system and this is really a higher end brake system. So it will generally be easier to work on that because the material are just higher end and the finishes are better made. So if you encounter a lower end model, then you will have um, probably some more problems. And then it's even more important that you follow the steps that I just described to prevent your brakes from rubbing. If you enjoyed the how-to video like that, please let me know in the comment section below. And uh, also tell me if you want to see more videos like that in the future. And I will gladly make them for you. You can also, of course, leave some suggestions and themes and uh, just stuff in general that you would like to see. And lastly, um, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one.